Hello everyone, and welcome to my list of the 14 things we didn't hear the developers talk about in the Spring Developer Update for Monster Hunter World. If you didn't get a chance to watch the Spring Developer Update, I did make a highlights video that shows the 18 main things we learned from the video. There's a link to that in the description, in the comment section, or you can click up here. It's only 7 minutes long. The Spring Developer Update had a lot of new information in it for us, however, there are some things that we're still curious about, and I thought I'd go ahead and make a list of the main things I'm still curious about that maybe we'll find out more about in the future. The developers did say that there was going to be another video or another update essentially where they're going to go into more detail. So these are the things I'm still curious about. Maybe you guys can tell me what you're still curious about if I didn't list it in this video. Change number one that we didn't see. We didn't hear about a brand new weapon. Now that would be really big news. So if I was Capcom, I would be saving that till just before the release of the expansion. And Capcom actually seems to like to do that. For example, at the end of this reveal trailer or reveal update, we noticed that they mentioned Arch Temper Nergigante is going to be available two days after the update, roughly, uh, really just one day. So they really do like to hold on to surprises and then throw it out a day or two before it's actually going to arrive. So we don't know if a new weapon's coming. Maybe there's still a chance, I would say. Uh, I would bet there's a good chance there's going to be a new weapon, but we right now we don't know. Uh, I'd be curious, what do you guys think? If there was a new weapon, what do you think it would be? Number two, here's a change they probably would have mentioned early on. There's really no reason for them to hold on to it. Uh, they did not confirm that Monster Hunter World would be made available for the Switch. This was one of the things that I especially wanted. I think that they have it on the PlayStation, the Xbox, and the PC. It would have been cool if they could have ported the game over to the Switch, even if it was like an older version of the game. Uh, kind of like the way the PC lags a little bit behind, but yeah, they didn't say that they were going to do that. And th that's a little bit disappointing, but it's not a big surprise either, I suppose. It was kind of a long shot wish. Number three, so although we heard there were going to be changes to the Slinger Pod and the Clutch Claw, and we heard about the Light Bogan's new mod, and they did say that there were going to be changes for all the weapons, one of the things they didn't do was they did not confirm if we were going to be getting Hunter Arts from the older titles or Hunter Styles from the older titles. So we don't really know what the changes to the weapons are going to be like. We can probably guess that the Sword and Shield has been totally reworked though, because one of the very few things it did that was unique from the other weapons in the base game was you could fire Slinger Paws while the weapon was drawn. It really wasn't that big of a deal personally, uh, but they've gotten rid of that. Now all the weapons can fire the Slinger Paws while drawn, so they have to have given, hopefully, the Sword and Shield a more powerful, robust moveset. It's not that the Sword and Shield really fell behind in terms of damage compared to the other weapons, it's just that I feel like the moveset was one of the least interesting movesets. It was just chops. You also got to use jump attacks occasionally, and that was about it. Change number four that we have not heard about is, will we be getting a new Siege monster? So I'm assuming Siege mode is going to return in Iceborne because honestly, even though I'm tired of fighting Arch-Tempered Kulftaroth, I think she's actually one of the most successful aspects, multiplayer aspects of the base game. So if I was Capcom, I would launch Iceborne with three new Siege monsters and it would rotate, something like that to make sure that the players don't really get as bored. But yeah, I, I imagine Siege mode is going to come back because it's got to be the most played part of Monster Hunter World. And, you know, it's the whole RNG loot system thing. And that's another question you could ask. Is it going to be loot system based again? It probably will be. Uh, what happens to Kulv Taroth, by the way? We never kill her in the base game. Do we fight her again? Is she missing her horns and we have an actual battle with her and we actually take her down? Uh, nobody really knows yet. Number five, we don't know if we're getting any new collaborations. So in the base game, we actually had a lot of collaborations and the one at the end uh, in particular, the Witcher collaboration was kind of a big deal. The Ancient Leshen was one of the toughest fights in the base game. And before that, we had the Final Fantasy Behemoth fight and that turned into Extreme Behemoth as well. So that was also one of the really the end game fights in Monster Hunter World. And uh, I, I feel like they did those two collaborations extremely well. Not only did they introduce a monster from another game, but uh, it was just uh, very fun to fight them. I felt like the monster was one of the best crafted, both the, both Behemoth and Ancient Leshen. I feel like they were two of the best crafted monsters in Monster Hunter World. So for Iceborne, they kind of have this standard to live up to in terms of collaborations, if they do any others. I hear a lot of people <laughs> calling on it. Uh, they want a Sekiro uh, collaboration or a Bloodborne collaboration or a Dark Souls collaboration. I personally would love that. As you guys know, I'm a big fan of FromSoft, so who knows what we'll get, but I would love to see a FromSoft collaboration. 
Change number six, we know nothing about any of the new mantles. I imagine we're going to be getting new mantles from the Iceborne expansion. Uh, you know, also, what's going on with the Palicos? So if you watch the reveal trailer, that the new Iceborne trailer, you'll notice that at the end, your character, uh, he gets hit by a giant snowball, if you want to call that. It, it could be like a boulder, right? And pay attention, he doesn't actually get knocked away. He goes into the fainting animation. That's the fainting animation. And then, of course, we see the Palico float over him, drop a gigantic figure wasp on top of him, and then your character gets back up and he's super happy, right? So I'm assuming what this is is a revive, and I'm, I'm curious, is it just a, an upgrade to the Vigor Wasp, or is it an entirely new equipment for the Palico? And how OP is that? Because now you can get feline insurance and one revive, I'm assuming, from your Palico as well. So in theory, you could have five lives, uh, which definitely just makes the game a bit easier, but, uh, you, you know, for solo play, who really cares? It's not, I don't think it's that big of a deal. This isn't a competitive game or anything, but yeah, it shows you that there's very likely changes coming to the Palico gear. What kind of changes are we getting to our gear? What about uh, boosters, right? You got health boosters, affinity booster, the cleanse booster. Are we getting new boosters? So these are all questions we have to ask about the gear. Number seven, we haven't heard anything about Alatrion or Oroshi Kirin. So uh, the leaked list, for the base game suggested we were getting both the Latreon and Oroshi Kirin as a free DLC, right? So we got all these free DLCs. We got like Lunastra, we got Kul'v Taroth, we got Ancient Legend, we got Behemoth, but Alatrion and Oroshi Kirin were on that list as well, and it never happened. And actually at the end, if you guys were paying attention, at the end of the developer update, you noticed that there was an apology for troubles that they ran into with the base game, Monster Hunter World, and that they weren't able to give us everything they had originally planned to give us. So the question now is, did those monsters get transferred over to the Iceborne expansion? Are we getting them in Ice, Iceborne? So are, will we see a Roshi Kirin in Iceborne and will we see a Latreon? And they haven't said anything about it. We didn't see anything about it in the trailer. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. Change number eight that we don't know about. Are we done with arch-tempered monsters? So arch-tempered monsters could in theory return to the end game of the Masterclass version, right? For, for the expansion, Iceborne, we get Masterclass. That's the new difficulty. Is Masterclass gonna have Arch-Tempered Monsters? Or are they just strictly for the old game, right? The, uh, the base. Uh, the other question I have is when you play Masterclass, do all of the old monsters, the easy ones like Anjanath, do they become really difficult as if they were Arch-Tempered? Is this why we never got an Arch-Tempered Gyrotodus, for example, or an Arch-Tempered Barret? Is it because they're going to become really insanely difficult? One of the things I noticed when they were showing off uh, changes to the weapons, so they did show some of the old monsters, and they showed their players using uh, uh, what looked like new armor, but it was using old monster parts, so that was really interesting. Change number nine that we didn't hear anything about, is there ever going to be cross-play? So I don't know, I doubt there would be cross-play between the PlayStation and the Xbox, but maybe there could one day be cross-play between the PC and Xbox. I suppose the problem with that is we now have confirmation that the PC is not going to be up to the consoles, unfortunately. I, I imagine if the PC was caught up to them, maybe they would have tried to implement a uh, crossplay between PC and Xbox. It's not impossible to have crossplay between Xbox and PlayStation, though. It's just a matter of will Sony actually agree to this and will they spend time allowing this to happen? I think it would be a really great idea because. Monster Hunter's not really a competitive game, and combining, you know, the groups between each other would just mean that as the game loses players, the, the player base would remain fuller and, and, and more fun for everyone, really. Change number 10 that we didn't hear anything about, I would like to know if they're improving the arena. Nobody really plays Arena for all kinds of reasons. I've got a, like a list of changes I'd like to see to Arena. Arena multiplayer should be easier to find. Uh, arena should have maybe a unique monster that you can only fight in the Arena. That would be cool. Arena should have some more unique rewards. Uh, arena scoreboard on the PC needs to be protected so that cheaters can't hijack the, the scoreboard. So there's all these changes I'd like to see made to Arena. I, I'd like to see a game mode in Arena where you can use any of your equipment and it's just like you know, still a competition to see who can get the best time. So players who are really in the end game and you've got everything unlocked can really compete against each other. And the truth is speedrunners generally do have everything unlocked. So this doesn't really bar other players out of this competition. The truth is you were always barred out of the competition when it comes to speedruns because speedrunners by default use the best equipment. So yeah, I would love to hear more about what they have planned for the arena. Hopefully we hear more about the arena in the future, but for now we'll just have to wonder. 
Change number 11 that we didn't hear anything about. Are they going to be buffing Poison? I feel that Poison is really weak in the base game, uh, and really there aren't any meta weapons for Poison. And one of the things we're seeing is they're taking things that they considered underpowered maybe, and they're improving it, right? Like being able to shoot the Slinger when your weapon is, is drawn already, uh, being able to use items while your weapon is drawn, uh, improvements to the light bow guns have been shown. Are they gonna do anything to make Poison Ailment more attractive to use? Cause I never use Poison Ailment. Change number 12 that we didn't hear anything about, no mention of underwater combat. I've heard a lot of people ask for underwater combat again. Uh, I think that would be interesting. They showed us the hot uh, the hot springs <laughs> where the monkeys are in, but yeah, no, no word on underwater combat. It doesn't really seem like it would fit into Iceborne too well because if you're in a cold area, it makes it even harder to believe that you're fighting underwater because wouldn't it be too cold? Change number 13 that we didn't hear anything about. Are there gonna be any changes to the player's room? So currently you go into your room, it's kind of this smaller area in the game and you can hang up your endemic life in the room and that's about it. One of the things that I would like to see change to the room is that versus certain monster fights, you can actually hang up like the monsters I don't know, like their head or something, as a trophy to show that you've defeated the monster, something cool like that, or just something more interactive to do in your room, because currently, just having it be for the endemic life makes it kind of a, a passive experience, something that you don't really think about too much, and something that you don't really get too excited for. But I feel like they, have, they could do a lot with the room, you know what I mean? It really should be a place for your trophies. All right, I'm almost done. I'm gonna wrap things up after this one. If there's something I've missed or something that you would like to hear more about from the developers, go ahead and talk about it in the comment section. Number 14, we did not hear about any kind of new gathering hub. Okay, so maybe they're not going to talk about the gathering hub because they're gonna wait until they have something to say about the siege monster. Because at this point, we all know the gathering hub is basically for the siege monster. The last thing they didn't mention is if there's going to be a new base. So we have the research base and we have Astero. This is like where you would go talk to the uh, the Elder Melder, you would check your garden, you would post a new quest, you would build a new weapon. Well, I imagine they should have a new one of these for the Iceborne expansion, maybe located in a snowy area, but we just don't know. Maybe you'll still be playing from Astera. Uh, anyways, that's my entire list of changes we didn't hear about from the Spring Developer Update. These are the questions I'd like to have them answer in the future. And with that being said, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.